Welcome to TalkNorth.com. Thanks to our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Please download before you listen. If you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at TalkNorthPodcast at gmail.com. And please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. So much baseball news to get to. So many Twins possibilities still on the table. Let's talk about all of that with Roy Smalley on Roy Smalley's Chin Music. This is our baseball show on TalkNorth.com. Please check out the entire network. Follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod where you can find the links for all the shows and find out what new shows we add as we, we continue to expand the network. We just added a gopher show with Marcus Fuller and Ryan James. They're both basketball experts, but they're going to talk about all gopher sports. Uh, please check that out. Probably the best way to get all the shows to subscribe to the entire Talk North network on your favorite podcast app. Thanks to our sponsors, Barry Coffee, BarryCoffee.com, and Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent and champlain. So, the reality of this is we're going to do it. We're doing this show on Thursday morning and any minute twins news could break. So we're going to talk philosophy to start with, and we'll, we'll get into some you know reality too. We're going to start with philosophy. So if you hear this after some more twins news is broken, you kind of know what we think about the, the possibility of the twins approach, what they should be doing. And then we'll get into some more specifics later in the show, but we want the show to have some, uh, some, some legs. We'll also talk about some pop culture and music later as we kind of get reintroduced that into, which because it's always been one of my favorite parts of the Roy show is uh, talking about music and movies and whatever else. But let's start here, Roy. You are a very good major league baseball player in an era when players really didn't make what they probably deserved to make. You were a member of the Players Association. Uh, you know, you had to negotiate for yourself, basically. Now you're a, a financial advisor. You're a vice president with uh, with Morgan Stanley. So you know the, the world of finance and sports probably better than anybody else. When you look at either the Twins approach to their payroll or what now the Yankees are doing and the Angels are doing, signing uh, you know Anthony Rendon uh, and all the massive record-breaking contracts that are being signed right now, including the Nationals bringing back Steven Strasburg. I guess what's your reaction? What's your thought? Do you think it's about time baseball is spending this much money? Do you think the Twins are right in being somewhat conservative? Where, where do you fall in all that? Well, I guess where I fall is totally disgusted with my parents that they couldn't have you know, just no wait, kidding. Tw- just wait 20 a while. years, I, no you kidding. know, 10, even 10. Um, but I, I, I think I, I like the twins approach for, you know, the twins, the Yankees, uh, the angels, the Dodgers, to some degree, the, the Red Sox, the Cubs, uh, those teams have revenue sources that evidently will justify, you know, this kind of money. And I'm, I'm not against any player getting, you know, all, you know, all he can get. I mean, I, I, I've always, you know, I've always felt that way. And, and it's, it's like Pete Rose said one time uh, when for the advent of free agency and, and uh, back, this is going to be funny, but uh, he signed with the Phillies for uh, $800,000 a year and people were gasping uh, at that. And, um, and Pete said, you know, look, I didn't go in there with a shotgun and hold them up. We went in and said, you know, basically, what am I worth to you? And they said, how about this? And Pete said, sounds good to me. You know, I mean, that's, and so teams are going to do what they are able to do, uh, from a P and L standpoint. And, and, uh, the twins are not in the situation where they can, they can spend 324 million over nine years for a pitcher. There's, there's, there, you know, there's no way. And the other thing that I think is, and I actually, I actually like that. I mean, there's only, like I said, there's five or six teams that can do that, and they're gonna, they're gonna keep doing it. They can't help themselves. The owner, the owners just absolutely can't help themselves. You remember the last two years, we, you know, we, everybody was talking collusion. Uh, the players' association was convinced that the owners had gotten together and said we're not paying these you know, these, these salaries. And, and it's just, it's just not true. There's no collusion. There are a bunch of smart young general managers and presidents of uh, baseball operations around the league. They're saying, okay, how are we going to have a uh, payroll uh, that makes sense for us 
you know, going forward and, and, and trying to be competitive year at, year in and year out, which I think the Twins are doing, and I think they're they I, I think they have a chance to do it better than than most of the non mega spending teams. So I I, I I like looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing what they they're gonna uh, they're gonna do. I do think that um, they're gonna they, they sh- should can will spend more money than they've spent. Uh, in the past, this year, I believe that, I believe that they will do that. By the way, as you were talking about Pete Rose, an eight hundred thousand dollar contract that shocked the baseball world. I still remember as someone who grew up a Baltimore Orioles fan, Wayne Garland leaving the Orioles, signing with the Cleveland Indians, ten year contract. I believe it was the first ten year contract in baseball history. Do you want to guess how much he made over the ten years? Oh, bad. What, what was? When was that? I, re- I remember. I was pl- yeah, I was going to say I was playing uh, when that uh, happened. Was well, probably uh, I don't know five or six million for ten years. Two point three million dollars for ten years, <laughs> and the baseball world was shocked that any team would make take that kind of a financial risk, Roy. Yeah, well, you know, it's the the thing about it is that you have to you have to think about position players and pitchers too and i i think I, I think signing a pitcher is you know just adds so much more risk to the to the you know to the whole uh scenario but you know, we've talked about this uh before there is you know there are plenty of statistics that they look at now about not spending too much time uh too much money on uh any one player uh, you uh, appropriately point out periodically while wow, everybody was screaming about Joe Maurer's contract um, after uh, after he signed that two three four years into into that contract everybody hated it and you know Joe was going to get twice that much money from the Red Sox or Yankees if he had chosen to do that so I mean it was a it was a contract that that had to happen and there are probably going to be some pitching contracts that have to happen this this winter and we're going to hope that he, that pitchers stay healthy and or uh the length of time on the contracts makes sense for the for the twins i want to give you credit uh you know i i listen i'm just going to say it. we've had a pretty good run here we we're both saying last winter hey they should sign uh, nelson cruz and like a yep. week later they sign him and then he has a great year and is the you know the the best dh in the game and is a great leader and largely responsible for 101 victories you know, we we we've we've had a pretty good track record lately of recommending moves, and you uh, brought up the very sound, savvy point you know, a while back, maybe right after the season ended. That hey, of course the Twins are going to try and free agents for a for pitcher. They may not get the one they want. They may not get one. Period. Uh, maybe one way they could go is sign a position player, strengthen the middle of the order, and then if they needed to trade a hitting prospect or a young hitter hitter on in their current lineup, then they can afford to do so. And maybe that's the way to get a pitcher. And man, uh, again, we're talking on Thursday morning. By the time you hear this podcast, they might've signed Madison Bumgarner. And then we'll address that in the next podcast. But boy, it sounds like that they are in agreement with that. I know they would have liked Rendon. He, he ended up getting a ridiculous amount of money. Now they're talking about Josh Donaldson, who might be a little more affordable, might be a, an ideal middle of the order hitter. And may, and now we're also seeing the rumors, you know, and I wrote right after the season, hey, if they're going to trade a position player, it's probably going to be Eddie Rosario. Now we're hearing rumors, uh, informed rumors, that Eddie Rosario could be somebody they trade for pitching. So talk about that whole philosophy again, because that's really playing out in real time now. Uh, I, I, I just think that you need to look at the, uh, uh, the uh, totality of your big league roster and then uh, down through the minor leagues and, and who you – uh, who is positioned to help uh, relatively soon, and who are guys that you really like, but you you know they're they're a little ways uh, away. Then then when you come back and you look at your big league roster and look at you know a lot of this has to do with just who's available. You know the the Twins the first year they went out and got uh, Lance Lynn for example, he was available. There was there wasn't a um, uh, a a better fit uh, pitcher really for uh, for the Twins and and of course that was complicated by the you know how long it took for uh, players to get signed and and they didn't have their spring training and all the guys that that signed all the pitchers that signed late like that had you know had uh, had bad years 
Then last year, there were some guys available, and they made some really good moves. I mean, we talked about uh, we wanting Nelson Cruz, and they did that. They went out. I thought Marvin Gonzalez was a terrific, uh, terrific uh, get as well. Uh, Jonathan Scope helped them a, a lot. He's not the long-term answer, but he, he helped them uh, a lot, and C- as did C.J. Crohn until he got hurt. So I thought they had a great winner of the players that were available uh, last year. So now you look at this year and say, who's available? And you look at pitching and you say, you know, I didn't know, I had no idea that Strasburg and Cole were going to get that kind of money. And uh, Rendon was going to, you know, I figured he'd get a lot, I, uh, that kind of money. But when they're, I figured Cole and, and Strasburg guys in that category were out. Uh, and for me, they were especially out because they were because they were pitchers. I would have I would have really thought about uh, Garrett Cole just because he's such a horse. You know, I mean, I think I think he's going to be one of the you know he already is one of the best, if not the best pitcher in the game. He's going to be that for a long time, I think. So, you know, barring injury, I think that's a I, I think he's uh, he's the number one uh, guy uh, this year, uh, for example. But I look at. Uh, given a nine-year contract to a pitcher as opposed to uh, somebody like uh, Anthony Rendon, who is just a, he's a proven commodity to impact your lineup, you know, every day. Then you look at, at your own lineup and you say, and this is what worries me. I mean, Nelson Cruz, everybody was marveling last year that here, look what he's doing at 39 years old. Well, that means we're hopefully going to really marvel at him this year when he does it at 40, right? I mean, at some point in time, uh, now let's say it may be 2021, but I mean, at some point in time, Nelson Cruz is not going to be the third hitter for the for the Minnesota Twins, and so yes, they need pitching, but they they also need to continue to find someone uh, to uh, bat third and fourth, and for the most part, for a long time, they have not had. You look at contending teams, you look at their third hitter and their fourth hitter, and you go, yep, I get it. Those guys accept the mantle of pressure that goes with those um, those spots in the order, and, and that's what Nelson Cruz did. Not, and not just his statistics. It's the fact that he went out there every day uh, willing to be the guy, and the Twins haven't had that, and without him, they still don't. Now, somebody might, somebody might step up, uh, but um, it, it hasn't happened to date, their lineup is is not absolutely. Oh, we know where the, who the leadoff hitter is, and who the third hitter is, and who the fifth hitter is, and all. I mean, we we don't know that. They don't know that for sure, and they sure don't know, you know, when it's going to be that Nelly Cruz starts acting his age, right? So I, that that was really what gave, got me to thinking about, you know, who's the third hitter going to be, uh, or who's the fourth hitter going to be behind Cruz that can be the third hitter when Cruz is no longer doing it. And that's, that's where, what got me to Rendon. Now, I know he's got a, I mean, that's a, that's a huge amount of money and it's a huge amount of money to spend on one position player when you really need pitching. So it, so, you know, maybe that's, that's uh, not logical, but I did think if you put, if you put Rendon there, you set, you, you satisfy a lot of a, a lot of needs. You've got great defense at third base. You've got a great RBI third or fourth place hitter. Uh, he takes the place of Nelson Cruz uh, well when that if that ever uh, needs to happen, and it gives you a lot more offensive flexibility to trade Eddie Rosario or uh, or anybody else and uh, for a pitcher and not have to pay necessarily free agent dollars. So I, I, I think. I think you have to look at the totality of your lineup and your roster down through the minor leagues and say, let's think of all the possible ways we can get better, uh, and not say the only the only way to get better is going to be to spend twenty or twenty five or thirty million dollars on a pitcher in free agency. Yeah, that's and that's laid out really well. Let me my next question for you, and I will. Ask it right after I thank Barry Coffey is, is Josh Donaldson, you know, a similar guy to Rendon in terms of being able to fill that role? Do you want to thank Barry Coffey, barrycoffee.com? Uh, listen, I'll, I'll make it really simple. I've told you about all the Barry Coffey blends, all the great equipment they have, uh, how they can help you if you're a, an office, if you're a bar, if you're a restaurant, if you're someone like me who wanted to have a machine at home that makes better coffee than you can get in any coffee shop. Go to berrycoffee.com, check out everything they have to offer. But also this time of the year, 
uh, you know, I have a member of the family who loves good coffee. 